One of the things I'm going to try to do this offseason is do a lot of work on opposing teams' offenses just to try to show fans and interested you know, people uh, what teams do on offense, what personnel groupings they prefer or they use, um, and, and try to use my football knowledge to help you know, provide some insight into why maybe certain teams are successful doing certain things, why certain quarterbacks are successful with particular concepts versus other quarterbacks and other teams in the way they call their plays. So the first team I'm going to look at, uh, besides the Ravens, I should say, is the Chargers. I have, um, I think, between 12 and 15 possessions uh, for the Chargers from last season completely labeled. So I've got probably 10 to 12 percent of their plays total from 2021. So do I have a representative sample? Probably not really. I'd like to have more in in the range of 30 to 40 percent of their plays um, uh, labeled and in my database. But let me go through some of the data first before I show uh, probably 12 plays today. Chargers in 2021 ran 1,123 plays on, on the season overall, offensive plays. 64% uh, of the time they were in 11 personnel. Like 700, that's like 714 plays, I think. 26% uh, of the time they were in 12 personnel. So the com if you combine those two, they were in 11 or 12 personnel 90% of the time. 90% of their offensive snaps were in 11 or 12 personnel. So they're a one-back team. We kind of knew that just from watching them play, right? Another way to look at that data is out of the 1,123 plays they ran, 1,006 of them were in 11 or 12 personnel. So they're an 11, 12 personnel team. Now they do use some of the same formations out of 11 and 12 personnel. And that's part of the reason for this video today. Again, I'm going to show you 12 plays. I'm going to show you two different formations. And hopefully I'm able to get you to see the reasons why the Chargers go in and out of 11 personnel. It's more than just down and distance, all right? So what I'd like to do is look at some of the actual personnel groupings and see uh, what the teams do out of those groupings, what the Chargers specifically do out of those personnel groupings. So I'm going to start with a formation that I call ACE. Uh, the, da the data and, and, the, and the information will all be up here at the top if you're unfamiliar with it. Uh, the gain here I think is actually a one-yard gain. That's labeled 16. That's not accurate. It's going to be a split zone concept. And inside linebacker is going to try to get a run through on the backside. He makes contact with the running back. Doesn't make the tackle, but he makes the play. And everything gets held up. They're also wrong arming here with the D end or trying to wrong arm. This kick out block by the H back. They're trying to wrong arm that so that there's no seam for Austin Eckler to run up inside of. It's a nice job by the Browns on the run defense, even though in this game they did kind of get the ball ran at them. I think the Chargers were um, 112 rushing yards in that game. Doesn't sound like much compared to the Browns' 230 in that game, but it was 4.9 yards per carry, so pretty significant. There's the linebacker that's going to get a jump through. Uh, out of 11 personnel in my database that I have, out of 11 personnel, which I think I have 88 plays in 11 personnel, the Chargers were um, 80% pass and 20% run. That's pretty significant. Now, a lot of them were RPOs like this one. Okay, Actually, this one's not an RPO. I don't believe the back uh, meshes with Justin Herbert at all. This is just a snag concept, and he hits the X receiver on the hash. Quick, easy read for the quarterback. They rely on Herbert, who's obviously very tall, to be able to see things quickly, get the ball out quickly. They do get the ball downfield. There's two patented routes that they run, and they really hit uh, the Bengals with, with two of their patented routes. Anyway, here's the end zone angle of this snag concept. You can see the X sitting on the hash, and then on the snap, the slot is going to go out into the flats. So they're just trying to create, they're trying to get this, num this guy Number 44, this inside backer, I forget his name. They're trying to get him to go out when the slot goes out, and that's actually what happens. Vacates that space on the hash. It's a concept that everybody in the NFL uses. Yes, the RPO is an NFL concept, even though this, this particular play was, was not an RPO. All right, this is ace under center, so you can see it's a little grainy. Herbert is under center here, not in the gun like the past, the last play. This is a sail, I call it a sail fade. You got, I believe you got an over route from this side of the field. 
So what they're trying to do is get the, the middle of the field free safety, which I think is Jesse Bates, to come up and help with that over route. And he does. Here's Bates now driving on this deep over route. I guess the backside corner is trying to help out here in case this is a post, but it's not a post. And they hit the Bengals hard with this route three times. This little sail fade to their big receivers, Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, both of those guys capable of doing great throw by Herbert. Play action concept under center. Good protection. You can see the wall that's developed here. It's max protection. I got it as 11 personnel. Maybe you guys correct me on whether this is a what position he's listed as number five. Looks like a receiver to me. So I got it listed as 11. In any case, great throw, like a 41-yard gain. Awesome. We're going to do a couple more out of ace, and then I'm going to do a uh, a patented um, little little ad for my, my Teespring. I'd like to see people buy some of the um, merch if you're at all interested. There's a little play action here. So this is still ace. I call this still ace, but it's ace gun. So what I mean by that is there's the quarterback and then the running back on one side or the other, either an A gun or B gun or king or queen, whatever. So as opposed to the last play, the play action, where there was the sale concept against the Bengals, Herbert was under center and went play action to get back here to this depth. In any case, it's a, uh, another pass play, slight play action, and then Herbert scrambles for like an 11-yard gain. Not really the purpose of this video, but obviously he's very multiple, and he can do those things you know, when relied upon. A dive play against uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati was able to defend the run really well out of their nickel unit, primarily because of people like this. I think this is Von Bell, extremely versatile player. I talked about him numerous times this year, defending the pass, defending the run. He's going to come up and get the tackle. Also, Sam Hubbard is kicking the shit out of the tight end here. You'll see it from the end zone angle. Look at Von Bell come up. He did this numerous times this season. Anyway, in any case, here's the tight end on the right, number 82. And Sam Harper's going to win this battle quite easily. Toss him to the side. And then Von Bell and Sam Hubbard get in on the tackle. What's my point? The Chargers, maybe they don't run a whole lot out of 11 personnel because it's not that effective for them. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what their rushing stats were for the year. I just know, I, like I said, I think I have 88 plays out of 11 personnel. 80% run, 20% pass for the data that I have. Now, now, whatever the data is for the for the year, if there's people who have that data in terms of run pass out of um, out of personnel groupings, that's great. I know I think it's Sharp Football has the actual personnel groupings for the season, and people rely on that often. But I don't know that he has um, run pass, you know, tendencies out of that. All right, same formation, Ace Gun. We're going to wrap up this formation here in a moment. What was the snag concept? Wherever the side of the back was. All right, you would have a snag by the X or the, or the the receiver, the outside receiver, and then a flat route by the slot, or in this case, the tight end. It might have been an RPO where the back crosses Herbert's face. That's the snag concept. So what they're doing now with their four verticals is they're kind of making it look like snag to the read side. So this guy's going to go vertical, but he's going to get an inside release, and then the slot is going to go. Technically, it's a tight end. He's going to release outside, kind of make it look like that flat route, not really, and then bend it upfield. It basically ends up being four verticals. Some people call it go switch, you know, whatever you want to call it. Usually, go switch means uh, you would have a, a, a receiver lined up a little wider, and he would go to the hash and up the hash. Of course, the NFL hashes. Are, are quite thin, so he may not run all the way to the hash. But that's this part here is typically what I would know as go switch. But in any case, I call it four verticals in my database if you're interested. Uh, you have to be a part of my Patreon to, to gain access to the database and then be able to watch the plays as you wish. And you can see, once they've run this snag concept enough, they're able to do stuff like this, and, and they get a pass interference penalty here because this DB is being so aggressive He's trying to get out of here. And you can see right now he's looking back at the quarterback, expecting the ball to be thrown. It's not thrown because it's essentially a wheel route. Pretty obvious pass interference penalty there. All right, in case you're interested, you know, or, or if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that uh, I started a, a Teespring. And uh, basically all, all I'm trying to do with that is to get people to buy the merchandise and give me some feedback on it. I think we've had at this point 
It's up to 21 purchases, I believe. Um, I have one myself. I actually have a coffee mug now. I was surprised at the quality of the um, of the graphic. I was a little worried about that, to be honest with you. My first time doing it. Uh, if you're interested in it or if you've bought one, give me a little bit of feedback on what you've seen. You know what the quality of the T-shirts is. Parents, apparently, it's um, it's Han the company is Hanes, I guess, for the shirts. All right, one more formation that we'll talk about. You know, for um, for the Chargers, and that's going to be what what I call twin slot. Now, there's motion here that comes down. So, twin slot is typically an 11 personnel formation, whereby you have two receivers here. That's the twin part. And then slot, meaning a tight end who's in the slot on the other side. In this case, the X happens to be next to him. The X, you know, he could be wider. Twin slot, I've got it labeled as A, meaning the running back is on the same side as the tight end. All right, and it's a screen up to the top. It's a great play by um, the DB up top because you've got a blitzing safety coming off the edge here by the Bengals. We know they're very aggressive. Great play by 22. I think that's a woozy, another fantastic player. Wilson in pursuit from the inside-out position. They took it to the Bengals in this game. I think they were up 30 to nothing, maybe 24 to nothing. They were up big, had to hold on to win the game. Bengals are young and fast. Love how their defense pursues. Love how aggressive they are. They're bringing pressure here for whatever reason. They saw something. They're bringing heat. Everything is very well coordinated for Cincinnati, which speaks to which speaks to the Chargers that they were able to jump them like that in Cincinnati and get ahead of them. Another snag concept here. So you're talking probably to it's got to be to this side to the right if you if you see the the uh, data here. Oops, sorry. If you see it's I have labeled middle of the field, so it must be this. Oh, this is the one where Herbert scrambles here in the middle of the field. But it looks like to me you're going to have a snag, a flat. Because that's they're on the side of the back. That's typically where they run, where the Chargers run their snag concept. Yeah, there's no mesh. Herbert takes a quick look. I guess he determines nobody's out. That's actually uh, out flat, not snag. This guy's not going into the hash. He's actually going out. It's not a China out. And then you got a flat. Typically, when you see that, this is the route that's open. The little out route. That's the route that's open because you've got the uh, you got the inside the hash defender looking for that snag concept so much he's staying heavy on the inside hip and then the out ends up being open. In this case, this guy does a nice job here of playing halfway between these two routes and maybe there's not enough space. Maybe the shoot route needs to be a little bit more flat. But in any case, this corner does a nice job along with what I think is an inside backer staying on the inside hip, not really giving Bur excuse me <laughs> Herbert anywhere to throw the ball and then he takes off running for a short game. Six or seven yard gain, I think, actually. Another another twin slot formation. This time against the Browns. They line up in it. Twins are down here. Slot is right here. Again, the back is on the side. This is going to be a huge gain to, I think, Jarrett Cook on the flat route here. And I think you get the angled hook here. And the back crosses Herbert's face. So they're trying usually you're trying to get this guy to move and read him. I don't think they're reading him here. I think uh I think this receiver runs and kind of shields this safety. I think it's almost like a shield RPO, something they knew would be open away from the nickel defender. Yeah, he kind of shields him here. So I think Herbert Herbert might be reading the corner all the way out here, which is I mean, it's rare, but people do it. He's definitely looking at something. Maybe he's looking at the safety. I don't know. You'll see from the end zone angle. You guys tell me. There's the safety. There's the corner. This guy's going to run the shield, basically preventing this safety from going with Jarrett Cook when Jarrett Cook goes in this little flat route. Some people call it a shoot route. You tell me what you think uh, Justin Herbert is looking at. They don't, you know, they, they do threaten you downfield. You saw the sail route. That I showed you. You can see the, how the shield concept is working. I, sh you, I showed you the sale route. Herbert's hit put multiple posts during 2021. Not saying in any way, shape, or form that he doesn't get the ball downfield. But they do utilize the RPO game and the snag concept a lot. Here's another example down here in the, in the red zone. It's a gun, meaning that it's twin slot, and here's the tight end. And the back is on the same side as the tight end. That's what I call A. 
if the back was over here on the other side away from the tight end then i would call that b so then the R there would be no rpo on this side the rpo would be to the twin side the rpo can only be to the side where the back is that's one of the things that's a little limiting about the pistol is that the it's difficult to run rpos in any case it's an rpo and it's a run play uh, by the running back inside linebacker number four does a great job i talked about this in another video he's essentially got a two-way go although this nose tackle is two gapping or, or trying to two gap so if the running back goes here or in this case to the left a gap which is where he goes the linebacker's got to be able to fit in between either one of them and he does a nice job I don't know what Austin Eckler's stats were for the year I'm going to be real with you I don't know what the Chargers where they ranked in the, in the run game for the season uh, but, but what I do know is 11 personnel very heavily weighted towards the pass at least from the data that I have all right so the backfield set this time is ace if you're wondering so ace to me means quarterback under center running back on the midline behind the quarterback and at a typical depth the formation is not called ace though the formation is still twin slot technically we would call this tight twin but in any or some people call it stack twins but in any case it's tighter and you get a delay by the y by the tight end he blocks initially play action set and then gets it out here to him, and I think he's able to make a guy miss. So a short game. You can see from most of these throws, they're not attacking deep that often. I mean, there have been a couple. Uh, here's a, here's another sale concept. Out of twins, and they attack Jesse Bates. Huge gain, I think, for a touchdown. This is a, this is a twin receiver. He takes him inside and brings him back outside. Kind of a semi roll with the quarterback. He rolls over here to the other hash. They must have saw something in the scouting report to indicate that Bates or somebody would be falling for this. You see this route here is, is holding this corner. So they've really isolated these two guys here. So they must have the matchup that they want to. Of course, we know Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are both huge. I'm not sure who that is, to be honest, which receiver that is, to be honest with you. But in any case, Bates is beat really badly. And the ball is slightly underthrown, but Herbert is throwing it from back here on the other 45. And then the ball is caught right at the end zone, I believe. That's a 55-yard throw. That's a bomb. There's no grand conclusions here for me, you know, in terms of tendencies saying, oh, all you got to do is do this to stop the Chargers. That's not the point of some of these videos. They're meant to be primers for what certain teams do on offense. I have about 20 possessions of the Chiefs. Of course, we know the dynamic of the Chiefs offense has changed this offseason with them trading Tyreek Hill, surprisingly for a lot of people, myself included. I have a ton of Chargers um, offensive possessions. I think I said I have 14 of them. And I believe I have about 25 Bengals formations. Now, in terms of the Ravens, I've got about 50% of their plays for the whole season. I think the Ravens ran about 1,200. Most NFL teams run about 1,200 plays, somewhere around there. And I think I've got a, a, about half right now labeled. And I think I've got about another 60 or 80 plays still to label for the Ravens. I think I've got 580 labeled, maybe 680. Anyway, this is repeat uh, plays here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. The point of this was to illustrate what I'm able to do with the database that I'm creating. You know, break things down into personnel groups. I generally, well, I mean, for the Chargers, you can't really show a whole lot of 13 personnel. They only ran it like 34 times this year. So 11 and 12 personnel. And, and what I basically showed you today was two versions of the ace formation. Ace with the quarterback under center. And then ace gun with the quarterback in the gun and the running back to his right or left. And then the last set of plays I showed you was out of twin slot. I'm trying to give people some, um, a little bit of information about how how teams classify plays. Offensive teams, you know, they, they probably don't call it this. This is what, you know, for me, defensively, we would call formations when we were trying to break film down um, on the weekend and during the week, and then when we were trying to, you know, stop people during the game and communicate with our players, with our kids, about what the formation was and what the threat was. I'm excited to get into more of the data for the Chargers and start to put out some videos on the Chiefs and the Bengals and eventually, you know, hopefully expand to the Bills and the Titans and I guess actually the Dolphins. The AFC is going to be a murderer's row 
uh, of, of tough, uh, tough, talented offenses uh, with playmakers on the field. Let me know what you guys think of this style of video. I know I've done stuff like this for the Ravens. You know, uh, this is a Ravens channel, but I'm going to try to do this for multiple AFC teams to put some information out there and, and offer what I think is some of the foundational elements of, of teams' offensive attacks. If you think there's anything that I missed, go ahead and put it in the comment section. It could be something I do another video on. Appreciate you guys checking out the video.